Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here, and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in Eve Online. Now it's been a bit more quiet in Eve. Basically, a lot of the drama has died down quite a little bit, so there's not that much to talk about. But there is a lot that's being deployed on CC, so that does look pretty good. We have the Tech Tree rebalance. We have another event that should start in July, which is going to be called the Agency. And it's basically going to be a bit closer to the Shadow of the Serpent with a different reward system. So let's hope that they can uh, fix all the problems that we had with Shadow of the Serpent and that they can make this a good one. Uh, I will try to cover that and uh, to take a look at that on CC. And uh, what was the final thing? Uh, oh yeah, Project Discovery, of course. The first iteration of that is also uh, up on the test server. So uh, I, I read that the tutorial doesn't work at the moment, but once they, fi they uh, fix that, I'll probably take a look at that um, as well. So looks like there's actually a decent amount of content coming for the July release as well. And you can take a first look at that on CC if you want to. Of course, we are here for the market, and as always, we are going to start with Plex. That's going to be at 120. And there we go. And well, Plex have gone up substantially in price. They're up to 2 billion, uh, 2 million 970 million, which is very close to 1.5 billion is on the old 30 day Plex. So, this is definitely uh, not what I was expecting. Um, from the perspective that we are starting to get into summertime which usually means lower activity and lower demand in eve but that doesn't seem to be holding up this summer i'm pretty curious if i should start to sell at this price range because 1.5 billion um, is up quite a lot uh, even from the high points of plex uh, like late last year with the accession expansion um, in the uh, uh, perimeter trade hubs uh, or i should say in the player owned trade hubs around cheetah they are going for 2 million 914 million uh, at the lowest price range so that is quite a difference almost 2 point uh, almost 3 million in Jita, uh, more like 2.9 million uh, in the player owned uh, trade hubs. And for the buyers, well, here in station, someone is buying 2.8 million, 2.84 million, and it's pretty much the same price for a lot of the player owned trade hubs. And then they go up to 2.80, uh, down to 2.806. So, well, there is a, quite a bit of demand in volumes. Uh, but uh, sometimes a buyer does jump in in Jita as well to uh, be willing to buy above the player owned trade hub prices. So that's quite interesting. Uh, on the chart, this doesn't look very good for players that look to um, plex their accounts. The high point here on average price is 2.95, which is the current sell price pretty much 2.95. Yeah, for uh, four plexes in Jita itself. And uh, back to a one year high, uh, basically I think that this is close to an all time high for a Plex as well. Uh, my explanation uh, for this, I think it's likely, uh, if not um, just a contributing factor, probably also a major contributing factor to the latest rally is uh, CCP's announcement that ghost training is an exploit and is going to be taken care of. Um, so I think that that basically means that a lot of player that, uh, players that had skill point farms that were doing it the legit way but stopped doing that because of what ghost training was doing um, decided that at this point it becomes economical once again to start up my uh, skill point farms but I do need Plex to get those up and running and so I think that spurred a lot of demand all of a sudden increasing the price to an equivalent of close to 1.5 billion for 30 days game time which is pretty damn expensive of course but um yeah when it's when ghost training was going on and and without an actual ccp response i can definitely see a lot of players that have skill point farms um so characters and accounts that are only there to train skill points that said you know i'm not gonna bother with that if, if there's gonna be this endless uh, faucet of skill points um that uh, ccp apparently is tolerating i can't believe it that they're tolerating it i don't think anyone uh in their in, in their right mind that that didn't have bad intentions uh for the game would be actually exploiting that uh but it, that you would decide to stop 
uh, funding your skill point farms because that didn't become economical anymore I think that does make sense and then restarting them after the actual exploit notification uh, makes a lot of sense to me as well so I think that those are basically most of the forces at work in the latest rally overall there is still inflation as well um, so lots of, of uh, ratting happening in Nalsic, you're still Nalsic, so the, the entire situation isn't fixed yet and is definitely primed for more inflation in general. Uh, but this latest rally, I think it's, it's tied to the ghost trading stuff. Uh, next up we've got the uh, multiple pilot training certificate. That one is actually dropping off in price all of a sudden. That's Oh, that is because there was a special sale on that, of course. So 1.22 billion for a multiple pilot training certificate. I mean, compared to having to do that with Plex, this is very cheap at the moment. Um, and 1.156 billion um, for the buyers here. So this is because there, wa there was and probably still is a special sale happening uh, with the training certificate it did restock the markets uh, quite substantially we used to have like not even a page of these guys on the seller side of things but uh, a lot of people have apparently jumped on the opportunity to uh, get those on the cheap redeem them and are putting them on the market so you can see the massive volume spike here together with the decrease in price because they came so cheap in real life money uh, of course uh, the skill extractors first i think these should mirror uh, Plex very closely and they do went up to a high point of 340 million is that's quite expensive currently selling for 323 million is it worth it to keep the filter on for the entire yeah it actually is I think because that's a lot of um, supply in volumes it's not that much but a lot of competition happening in the player owned trade hubs here it's especially now happening in Itamo just two jumps out of Cheetah as well very interesting to see this actually extend out we're not seeing a lot of stuff happening in perimeter um or just one jump out um which is here perimeter uh but we are seeing itamo come in as well two jumps out here itamo two jumps out here uh so quite interesting how this is slowly expanding and becoming a different type of competition happening between players when it comes to uh, their player owned trade hubs that's that's quite interesting this is probably my goal as well uh, for after the summer probably for the winter expansion in fact that is to get a large structure with a, a market hub somewhere so I think that's basically what I'm edging towards but it's it's definitely actually an interesting uh, aspect of the structures here how it used to be just one jump out of, of GTA and there you had the perimeter at first of course because a lot of traffic goes there uh, where a lot of, of, of players try to establish a trade hub um, if that's not always all that successful they went the other side so another jump out of Chita and now it's in Itamo where planet 5 trade uh, is, uh, is, is doing quite a little bit of effort to get some, uh, some business going there which can be a huge amount of passive ISK if you do it the right way so there's quite a bit of supply here in Chita itself skill extracts are going for 333 million ISK and the cheapest ones are going for 323 million ISK so 10 million ISK difference on the seller side of things let's take a look at the large skill injectors first those are the ones that we know and these are actually going down in price a little bit that's uh, a slight surprise considering the ghost training effect uh, but they are still selling for 724 million is almost well almost it's very relative but edging towards that 1 billion price range used to be like 600 million this is definitely pretty expensive for skill injectors despite the drop off in price so they actually cost more than 750 million a while ago and of course we do come from right here you can see even 550 million pretty much straight up over the last eight nine months to 750 million and here we have this uh, drop off at some point that happens with almost anything that goes up for a year straight and actually has a bit of a rush here in may to go uh, straight through 700 million and then up to above 750 million basically not sustainable for very long for the market so a bit of a correction but still a very expensive price for a large scale injector so the demand for sp is definitely um, out there which is something that's completely foreign to me uh, I stick to one account I stick to one main character that that trains that doesn't really need any of the other skill points anymore 
and so I'm, I'm not in the rush to actually go and, and buy skill injector skill extractors but it seems to be a major part of the game and as I've personally said I do think that it speeds up the EVE Online experiences maybe even uh, lowers the life expectancy of, of the game of new players that uh, get into the skill injector way of doing things. So the small skill injectors of course these are under pressure a little bit as well in the last few days currently selling for 145 million and the buyers are at 140 million. And again here the Itamo trade hub showing up uh, when it comes to uh, a lot of the uh, activity in player owned trade hubs. Very, very interesting. Uh, I do wonder if at some point we'll see uh, more conflict around this as well uh, in actual warfare with war decks, um, with the competition trying to take out uh, each other's uh, trade hubs, which I think is something that would be very cool uh, to see happening in the game. I guess at the moment with the three timers, um, it's it's very difficult to actually do this and uh, that's probably why it's not happening that much and so most of the competition is probably in taxes there but pretty interesting and so a, a positive uh, aspect of keeping this filter off for at least the plex category is that we can see where active trade amongst players in player owned structures is actually moving to and at the moment uh, the movement is to itamo and so two jumps out of the now quite interesting um, next up, uh, we've got some minerals. That's going to be at 11.25. There we go. And as always, we'll start with the small stuff. Here is Tritanium. We put the filters back on for uh, the sellers uh, because a lot of the other sellers that come in here are eight jumps away, four jumps away. We're talking about a lot of low sex stuff as well. So let's put the filter back on here. Take a look at Tritanium. Uh, slight downtrend in the last few days, but this is after an uptrend towards 5 ISK. Quite interesting. Nice. 5 ISK at the upper uh, median daily prices. Currently selling for 484, 600 million, 750 million. It's quite a bit, but 5 ISK on the seller side of things with 2 billion and 2 billion here comes into view. This is pretty interesting. Um, and then the buyers here, yeah, unfortunately, this is not that great. I'm actually going to take this filter out just to see what's happening in Jita. 478 for the buyers, a billion here as well at 464. So I would say uh, below 5 ISK, uh, we definitely have enough demand to pick up almost anything that comes in here. And so Tritanium at the moment is probably going to be bouncing off of the 5 ISK mark uh, for a little bit. The question is, can demand stay strong enough? Can we get above 5 ISK? Are the nerfs finally coming through uh, on the mineral market for Tritanium? It's clearly with that, uh, clear here that we have uh, that we've had a slight uptrend in uh, the price since its um, early March bottom here. So nice to see a bit of a comeback for Tritanium, and nice to see five is coming back into range. Uh, that is basically on the lower end of what we used to see for Tritanium. So six, seven is is more normal. Above that is a very good price for Tritanium. I'm talking historically speaking here, uh, but um, five is coming back into view with the raw call changes and all of those problems. I think it's good news for Isaac miners. Moving on to a bit of pyrite here. Let's take a look at that. That is uh, on a massive dump in volumes. We went down in price. So this is the, the one danger when we see the price go up to um, especially a psychological point here. Apparently six close to seven isk is, is what happened. And then uh, a big holder of volume says, you know what? I'm not going to keep waiting for this. You can see here that uh, we've been at 10 isk. Ascension expansion hits. We're going down 6 isk, 5 isk comes into play. We've been meandering here for a long time. And some people may end up losing their patience. And when they see one opportunity, like right here with, uh, with Pi Right Go Up, they dump massive amounts, causing the, Christ, uh, the price to crash back down towards 5 isk. So 5.33 for the sellers, 5 uh, this is again 11 jumps out, so we have to look at the green ones here basically. 524 for the buyers of Pyrite. And here we get another 2 billion units coming in at 557. So the competition does go very quickly from 557 to 533. Um, so there is a bit of hope for a bit of a bounce back. But yeah, Pyrite, a massive dump happening by a player or several players. And uh, this caused, unfortunately, the price to crash back down. 
Let's take a look at Mixlon here. No massive volume, but again, the price is still going down to 67 ISK on average now. 68.3 for the sellers, 66.71 for the buyers. So Mixlon basically well below 70 ISK at this price uh, range now. 340 million ISK as the latest vol uh, units, as the latest sell order here is quite a lot so it's pretty obvious that the months and months of uh, mixalon being the one viable um, high sick mineral to mine for um, is now being um, basically out pressuring the need for mixalon in a null sick uh, so i think that here you know people that mine in, in high sick are mining for mixalon because it's the one that that's going to increase their isk per hour um, to the most all the other ores um, are, are pretty bad at the moment as a result you get that increased supply in nosic things are probably balancing out a little bit more with the nerfs and as a result mixlon is actually going down in price because of this even if you don't see uh, the the big volumes or anything like that so basically i think that the nosic demand is is, is uh, going down a little bit and as a result high sick uh, high six focus on Mixalon is going to start to show through here on the supply side of things. Next up, we've got Isogen here, another dump happening when the price hit 57 ISK, which is not a lot for Isogen, but compared to, of course, uh, prices below 50 ISK before that, it's a great opportunity. And here you do again see massive volumes coming in, causing the prices to spike down 50.63 for the sellers and 47.46 for the buyer so here basically what's happening is that they allowed the price to go up to close to 60 isk but then they said you know what i'm gonna keep dumping keep dumping up until selling for 50 isk basically and uh, that's when they said all right here we're gonna keep the rest of the stocks but this is a lot of dumping happening in the last 10 days or so causing the price of isogen unfortunately to drop back to 50 isk basically for the sellers uh, and the buyers are very close to that. Moving on to Noxium happening here again, although it's not as visible on the volumes. You can see though that from time to time you have averages that are basically half of what has been continuously been going on in the last four or five days. So here jump up to almost 400 ISK. Currently selling for 335 ISK. Buyers are at 320 ISK. And 50 million here is probably going to be one of those problem sell orders at 335 that may have become their cutoff point. Uh, anything below that is, is where they allow smaller players to try and get that competition going. But it's very likely that prices went up to close to uh, 400 ISK. And as a result, they've been trying to dump. Yeah, you can see it here. Anything below 400 come in with big volumes, big volumes, big volumes up to 335. Here we've got smaller volumes and as a result prices once again crashing down substantially. Still not at the bottom but definitely uh, not good to see these high stick minerals have to give back a lot of their gains um, on a massive dump like this. So that's what's been happening. Let's take a look at uh, Nulsic Zydrine slowly going up. It's mostly a sideways movement but I think it's basically comfortably above a thousand isk now. Yes a thousand 29 for the sellers and a thousand and five is for the buyers. So the buyers have basically been pushed up above a thousand isk. Sellers can get a little bit of a premium on their Zydrine, although it is not yet uh, any real violent movement. It's a very slow upwards movement here um, in Zydrine. Still in a very good price range. Uh, I said, I think last week and a couple of weeks ago, that if you can buy your Zydrine for less than a thousand isk, especially if you're planning to use it, it makes a lot of sense to do so to build up some stocks at this uh, price range here. And now we're slowly going up in price, which again is one indication that uh, Nasdaq mining is basically a little bit less out of control here, and that we have more of these. Uh, mechanics where yeah, high sick minerals are influenced by high sick production but also high sick demand and null sick production is slowing down a little bit and those minerals are slightly going up in price. Megasite, what's that doing? Very same thing here, slight uptick as well towards 1300 ISK. 
1,288 ISK for the sellers, 1,241 ISK for the buyers. Not a lot of margin here. Um, and here again, that one caveat when it comes to Nelsic Minerals, you're seeing a lot more in volumes, 2, 3 million coming in on the sellers than anything on the buyer side. With uh, Zydrine, it should be the same thing. Yeah, 3 million, 3 million here, 100,000 here on the buyer side of things. Yet, this is not an indication that it's massively oversupplied. The reason is, this stuff isn't mined locally, all of it has to be imported and as a result the sellers tend to really have the patience of going for a sell orders and uh, most activity is happening through those sell orders. The buy orders are, are almost an afterthought in these markets in Gita. And finally we have a Morphite that went up a little bit and is now basically um, hovering at the 9500 is range. Um, and uh, just staying there sideways movement for a morphite that doesn't seem to be that influenced by the changes to mining in general 9456 for the sellers 9157 for the buyers that's a decent margin between these two and uh, again um, i picked up a bit of morphite for less than 9000 isk we're still just above that if something major happens to tech 2 this could be a really good investment but you can also see now that we've been at this price range well below 10,000 isk for quite a while now so i can understand if your appetite for more fight is not very high moving on to some pi at 21 minutes and there we go um, we'll see here if the normalization basically holds up the general story in pi last week i think was uh most of them coming back to average with a few outliers that were still very high i think consumer electronics for instance but here in construction blocks you can see a slight uptrend but nothing too dramatic and nothing completely out of range of the 12,500 isk on the chart which i would say put it at an average price 13,000 for the sellers 11 12,000 let's say for the buyers so 12,500 on average it, it's a normal price uh, maybe a slightly better price for uh the um for the sellers than average but um yeah it's it's okay it's basically in in the average range here i would say uh to my surprise here 61,000 units you would think a lot of oversupply but 41,000 here 40,000 here on demand as well very strong demand still for all this pi uh which could help uh increase the price in my opinion um, next up we've got consumer electronics so this was one of those exceptions last week that did go back to a one year high towards 17,000 isk has to give a little bit of ground back but still well above average 15,700 for the sellers of consumer electronics and 14,500 for the buyers quite a, a decent margin here but both of those well above average 12,500 I think can be considered an average price gain for consumer electronics so if you can produce this or if you have stocks of consumer electronics it's still still definitely the right time to sell those coolants next that is continuing its slow descent here towards 11,000 isk so the sellers are at 11,800 the buyers are below 11,000 10,800 right here and this is actually probably around the average uh, trade range maybe a little bit below that because we are on a slight downward movement here and in the last uh, week or so as well but coolants is actually very easy to make all you need is a gas planet uh, both the products that you need in order to make coolants especially the water is, is very very plentiful and as a result um, the average price of coolants is probably in the uh, 12 11 to 12 thousand uh, isk range whereas cons uh, construction blocks consumer electronics which is not uh, easily made i think on a single very common planet um, and, and probably has lower yields, let's say, in, in, on average on those plants as well, especially in high sec. Uh, those tend to have an average price of like 12,500 is so coolants. This may seem like a very sharp drop off, but this is actually very close to just coming back into normalcy, a normal trade range for coolants. Um, the effect of this, I'll quickly maybe mention that you can see it on the ticker, uh, is that coolants being a major part in production of fuels, uh, that these prices are actually pushing down the price of fuels nicely, which is very good, I think, uh, for people that own structures like myself. So coolants, this seems very dramatic, but this is actually, I would say, uh, maybe at the lower end of the normal trade range for coolants. 
enriched uranium next also as you can see here settling down enriched uranium is uh, quite the opposite of coolants it's also used in uh, fuel manufacturing but you need much more uh, rare planets like plasma to make it on a single planet and the stuff that's needed to make enriched uranium is not um, as uh, high yield on those planets either basically water is, is very ubiquitous in a big band and the other one ionic solutions for coolants i think it is um, is also quite plentiful in another band so all you need to really do is put your production in between those two and then you can make coolants at a very nice clip very consistently um, in, in on gas planets but enriched uranium is a bit more tricky and so here the average is probably even above 12.5 thousand is here so currently we are slowly edging towards that though so enriched uranium currently selling for 15,700 isk the bars are at 14,000 isk you can again see a pretty wide margin 150,000 here people are selling at these better than average prices but in the last few months we've clearly been under pressure this again adds to lower fuel prices and i would not be surprised if this continues to happen um, through the summer so demand here could be interesting 30k here 70k there is still definitely really nice demand as well but at the moment supply is winning out and what i would be most um, afraid of basically uh, of, of a scenario for the summer is that lower activity which again i'm i'm saying it's gonna happen but maybe ccp can keep us all interested enough who knows but lower activity might just uh, get this demand and i actually think that a lot of the major players that have a lot of the supply are also building up stocks and as a result we might get into a, a buy opportunity through the summer that's basically what i'm keeping a close eye out for mechanical parts next very similar story here um, went up for like a year straight up to april the high point at more than 15,000 isk now we're coming back down and here again mechanical parts very common easy to make on a barren planet which again is very common currently selling for 11,150 isk bars are 10,500 isk if we drop below 10,000 this might get in interesting territory to buy considering this entire chart but um, this again is probably a bit below average but not by that much it's, it's again not as dramatic as what it looks on some of the others you sh should not put the average of mechanical parts on 12,500 isk it's probably 11 to 12,000 isk that's an actual average uh, price range for these uh, goods oxygen next uh, not very good news a slight tail off uh, at the end here going down towards 400 isk once again selling for 438 bars are at 404 this is one of those processed pi materials so just a p1 base material into one uh cycle gets you these processed pi materials it's a bit unique oxygen because once again it is needed in the production of fuel so here again with coolants which enrich uranium being done in price this puts more pressure on the fuel prices which is good news for me Robotics next. Um, after a bit of a hesitation, like 10, 15 days ago, um, when we went back up to above 110,000 isk, the um, the movement down is happening once again here. Average prices below 100,000 isk. Quite interesting. Sellers 104,000, buyers 99,300 isk. So uh, robotics actually, on average, I would say, are a little bit below 100,000 isk. So we are here once again. Um, correcting back to normal average price for robotics we're still a little bit above that but not that much anymore rocket fuel next uh, this is something that is quite unusual but here uh, this chart did uh, turn out to happen in rocket fuel so it's a weird chart again uh, with the median daily prices all over the place it's very difficult to actually gauge what's happening but normal average price 12,000 isk move a bit above and below that for rocket fuel but here all of a sudden in uh, late January we jumped up to a new trade range 14,000 isk maybe sometimes even 15 and 16,000 isk we managed to stay there up until May and here now the correction happened and we're back on the average prices rocket fuel selling for 11,900 isk bars are at 11,000 isk very close to um, maybe a, a good buy opportunity if again demand can drop out because of lower summer activity we get rid of all of these 11k ones then we very quickly come into 10,900 10,800 isk which becomes quite interesting i think for an investment of rocket fuel 
self-harmonizing uh, power cores next at least 20 day moving average is still trending down with the median and daily prices here but it's hesitating to really break those previous low points that we reached here so self-harmonizing power cores selling for 2.1 million buying for 2.1 million basically the market is stabilizing around that price range and here again uh, i i am personally hoping for that scenario but there is maybe ccp can keep activity high enough in the game that it doesn't or hype around pi related items as well with the structures high enough that it doesn't happen but i'm i'm sort of hoping that yeah with lower summer activity we'll also see um a maintained supply for self-harmonizing power cores but that lower demand on fewer players being active uh, actively preparing for the next set of structures and uh, as a result hopefully we'll maybe see like a, a self-harmonizing power core for, with buyers below 2 million i think that would make sense to make a move on those then superconductors next um after reaching a decently low price point close to 10,000 is back up just a little bit but here I think basically we're starting to move in a normal trade range. 12,500 is for the sellers, 11,400 for the buyers. And um, this I, I think is basically the average price for superconductors. Test cultures next, moving at probably a lower price range here, 8,300 for the sellers, 7,400 for the buyers. Very steady in the last few months. So here again, considering the entire chart and the potentials up to 15K, uh, you could make an investment on that, but don't go all out. Don't spend all your ISK on that because of course, we've been moving at this trade, ra uh, trade range for quite a while. And we can see here that low price range of 6,500 are actually possible as well. So it's up to you to try and time the right uh, amount and the right timing for test cultures, I would say as an investment. And if again, this summer you like myself expect lower demand and lower prices then the right time to strike may yet be to come finally wetware mainframes that one is going down which uh, gives me a little bit of hope for self-harmonizing power cores currently selling for 2.1 million bars are at 2.05 million so again this is clearly under pressure and i think that it's going to keep happening as well for self-harmonizing power cores this is coming very close to buy orders below 2 million where i think it becomes very interesting to start looking uh with our mainframes here um below 2 million right here where i think it starts to become interesting uh, as an investment it still needs to go through quite a bit of volumes on the buyer side of things 2000 here 1400 here but i think it can happen uh, so that's it for pi basically we're coming down from a very strong march april for a lot of these back towards more average prices and then the summer could be quite interesting uh, if if it happens the way i'm uh, personally expecting it to happen if not of course then then uh, we'll see that in eve talk because i'm definitely keeping this category it's very interesting one uh, with slower movements but with quite sizable movements very often uh, that provides great opportunities for people to uh, to make isk and at the moment lots of them going down and uh, maybe we'll see something happen in the summer as well and next up take one chips uh 3250 there we go uh, let's go over these again, but I don't think that there's a lot happening here. We do see uh, a quite a big volume on abandons, uh, although that's always relative. Of course, 39 uh, is not that much, but as prices reach and then 60 million, there was quite a bit of demand and we went back up to 190 million. So 199 million for the sellers and 163 million for the buyers here. Basically, yeah, uh, uh, someone bought all abandons below a certain price range. And uh, as a result, we'll need probably a couple of weeks uh, for this to get filled back up, prices to go back down. But it's interesting to see this, this volatility uh, in the abandon uh, battleship here, that uh, when prices reach that low point towards 150 million, uh, then uh, there is this big buyout that tends to happen, uh, which is not that many ships, right? 30, 40 ships, not that many, uh, but they, they do jump up the price substantially. And as a result, the market needs a bit of time 
to uh, fill that gap. Battleships, of course, the bigger uh, non-capital ships that require more minerals and more time to produce. So it's nice to see a little bit of volatility basically coming in here at the tail end. It shows that there is at least some sort of interest in the tech one market, which has been uh, not doing very well in, in the last few months and even years. The Caracal next, also a slight jump up in price, but already correcting back to less than 10 million ISK. So 9.9 .9 million for the sellers, 9.8 million for the buyers. Did this average here get above that? Yep, 10.2 million. So here again, um, slight interest on higher volumes, increase in price after we reach probably a low point of close to 9.5 million. But uh, a Caracal, it's only a cruiser, a lot easier to produce a lot of those, bring them to the market. And here we can see half a front page with 109 here, 38 here, 67 here. Um, it's a lot easier to fill this uh, increase in price up and as a result it's probably not as high uh, percent twice as with the Abaddon and uh, much more short-lived than with the battleships. Uh, the Covter uh, slowly going down in price that's not good news to 24 million so 26.4 for the sellers 23.6 for the buyers that basically means that um, there's a lot of impatient Covter producers that are selling to the buyers because the average prices are uh, quite a bit closer to uh, the buy orders than to the sell orders and um, supply it's still decently plentiful just couple uh, sellers coming in uh, every day here for the governor slowly putting this one under pressure but yeah i think the average price going down like that is basically due to some impatience on a few of the sellers Hurricane next, basically very flat at the current trade range, 46.5 million for the sellers, 42.5 for the buyers, uh, very cheap for the Hurricane. Oh, let's, this reminds me that we should definitely take a look at, um, quickly at that standard. I think it's uh, a cruiser. Is it the Rupture? Yeah, the Rupture is getting a redesign and doesn't show up on the market all right so i thought maybe there would be a bit of a show of of, of interest in the rupture all of a sudden because of the redesigned dev blog but no just not not happening just yet i think the actual um launch of that of a redesign of the ship makes more sense because a lot of people don't read dev blogs then they see oh wait this looks different i'm actually gonna buy one and fly one a little bit uh, that's probably what's mostly uh, happening there. Maelstrom, again, going down to a very low price range, around 150 million, 157 for the sellers, 146 for the buyers. And this looks primed basically for another increased volume, another buyout happening and a jumping up of the price. So I think by next week, if that does happen, that we are starting to see this market activity when it comes to the battleships, which could be an interesting precursor to maybe some more tick one volatility. But uh, there would need to be some extra stuff happening, I think, for that to actually maintain itself and maybe start to mean higher um, higher margins for the producers. Here's the Megatron, again a battleship showing some volatility, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, went from 150 million up to 170 volumes, maybe a little bit visible right here at the start of that, uh, but not by that much. Currently selling for 173 million and the bars are at 155. So a bit of a jump up here again in the Megatron. Some yeah, basically battleship volatility. The prophecy as well uh, going up quite nicely up to 59 million ISK. That's quite respectable. Yeah, 59 million ISK for the prophecy, 45 million for the buyers. Quite a wide margin, not even on big volumes. So apparently there are just so few available that uh, that a little bit can, can trigger the price to go very uh, high all of a sudden. So if you can produce prophecies, it's the right time to do so and bring those to the market for sure. This is a the highest price we've seen since the Ascension expansion. And then finally, the Scorpion here again, um, it's a lot more tricky, I guess with volumes of, of 10 to 15, it's a lot more tricky uh, to make something happen. But we did have this jump up here to 160 and we're currently on our way back down. So we see this slight increase in supply in the last week or so going from 160, 153, 153. So that's basically what's happening. People buy out everything up to 160 and then slowly supply trickles in on that. And because it's a battleship, because it's bigger, it takes a bit more time and it allows for the price to increase 
uh, quite a bit higher. And in the most more popular ones like the Abaddon, um, there is actually, well, you know, there's definitely not a lot of those on the market, uh, cause see, uh, causing us to see price of close to 200 million all of a sudden for a battleship, which is not that bad even compared to pre-ascension uh, price ranges. The Vexor next uh, cruiser, very, very flat, and that redesign did nothing for the ship, so it does look absolutely great. It's an awesome PvE ship, but it's so oversupplied that it's still holding 10.3 million for the sellers, 9.5 million for the buyers. Pr plenty of, of Vexors on the market for the current demands. Oh, but this, uh, maybe the redesign didn't do much on the price, but seems to have done something on the volumes, though that is a noticeable increase in volumes for quite a bit here, uh, probably since um, close to the um, um, actual uh, change of the look of Vexors here. That is definitely noticeable. Unfortunately, of course, Tech one is, is such a, a depressed market because of the minerals as well, because of the lack of demand. That is hardly made any difference when it comes to the actual price of Vexors. So that was Tech one Let's move on to the Tech 2 market, 4015. And let's see if we can spot some opportunities here to actually do a bit of trading. So, um, some, you know, this does look slightly interesting when it comes to the battleships. It's maybe something I'll, I'll have to look out for. The problem, of course, is the lack of actual supply here and the fact that I think uh, this, this gap will get filled very quickly uh, by supply. And so you'll maybe be able to unload one or two of those at a better price. But it's going to be very tricky to actually do a lot of trading in this. When it comes to the Take-2 market, I'm hoping that we can spot some better stuff. And here, for instance, for the Aries, this is definitely not bad, right? You could have bought a bit ago, a couple months ago, for like close to 20 million in all likeliness, uh, considering the average price of 20.7 million. And here we have this lovely spike up to 30 million, which is now, of course, coming back down. But that does mean that the Aries market is alive. 23 million for sellers, 21 million for the buyers uh, basically in Jita you do have uh, just one buy order and then 19.5 million but um, if you could pick those up for for 20 million or a bit less than that you're having a great price for the Aries and you can see that you have these sell opportunities at 26 27 and sometimes even 30 million is so this is a lot better because you also of course have volumes in the hundreds practically every day which is really great uh, the claw next also basically coming back down from a high point above 25 million no, close to 25 million we should probably say um, but here buyers less than 20 million on average so here the claw probably 18 million 18 to 19 million would be that no-brainer price point we're not there because we're on our way back down of course uh, but it does show that there is a bit of trade potential um, for the claw as well the Chronix going up in price a little bit, went up to 27 million, low range 22.8 million. That's a bit tricky to do a lot in, um, so I would like to see the Crow drop quite a bit lower towards 20 million. Just isn't happening uh, in, in the last few months here. So there is some volatility, but it's difficult to make money on the Crow, I have to be honest. The Aries, for instance, and the Claw here uh, is, is quite a bit better. Uh, the Aries next, uh, or Aries, not sure how to pronounce that exactly. Uh, this one is interesting. It's a little bit of that outlier, just like, uh, what was it, rocket fuel in PI. Um, it also has these median daily prices all over the place. And basically this, this long trade range around 45 million is, then all of a sudden this, this dump down towards 37 million on average, I think was uh, what we maintained here for several months. And then finally a jump up towards 50, 55 million ISK. And now we're basically back at that 45 million ISK trade range, which was quite normal. This is difficult to time, uh, but seeing what happened here, it would be nice to see another drop off at some point towards 30, uh, at least less than 40 million ISK. Then, you know, you could try to pick up some of these Aries um, advanced destroyers, these interdictors. Uh, this could happen on like a sudden really sustained oversupply situation for some reason, for instance. And this is a nice show that there is this opportunity here for quite a long time. You could have bought Aries for 37 million ISK and then in May you could have sold them for 50 million pretty easily, which would have made you quite a bit of money. The volumes here on this as well, uh, 14, 15, so don't buy hundreds of them, but maybe five to 10 would make a lot of sense. 
and uh, five to ten times 30 million you know three uh, a trade of almost half a billion would make sense in in this market here and it's probably possible to uh, pick up some uh, some nice trades the flycatcher that is unfortunately yeah flat at a, a trade range that's well above the average here at the moment so 62 million for the sellers 58 million for the buyers that's probably not where you want to make your move on this one um, next up we've got the heretic that is that is a lot better of course uh, just here in uh, early may you could have bought these for 51 million they're currently selling for 65 million basically we're empty of those so if you don't go crazy with the volumes again you can definitely make some money on that and don't forget here in february we actually had a low point for the heretic that was close to 45 million is that's a nice premium so here again the heretic showing that uh, there is trade potential the average is here again it's an interdictor to 15 probably a day 10 to 15 a day here so don't buy hundreds of them again but a trade of maybe five to ten of these uh, can definitely uh, get you a nice return the hound next also taking off that's that's quite nice right um, although it's taking off from 20.5 million we like to see this chart go below 20 million before we actually announce an opportunity to buy the hounds but let's say that you could have bought them for 20.5 million uh, just a couple of weeks ago they're currently selling for 25 million is 25 percent increase in price not bad and it's on increased volumes here as well 152 yeah hounds very interesting as well uh, to pick up maybe by the dozen or something like that and here showing that this market is definitely alive unfortunately that lower price range here didn't go as low as what we like to see but that's all part of the gamble that you have to take of course malediction next this is probably not where i like the malediction at 25 million just don't like it in general um this interceptor is for some reason not uh showing the same the same patterns and the same volatility as some of the others so malediction we're maybe waiting for that real buy opportunity which would be at like 20 million on the chart uh buy orders below 20 million that's where i would say yeah, you know what here we can try to invest in some maledictions and wait for the right sale opportunity at like maybe 30 25 to 30 million uh but it's just not been happening lately the manticore next that's that's quite nice this is what we do like to see uh, i think i may have called it last week manticore is going down here to well uh below average here 23 million on the chart probably you could have bought those for 22.5 million or something like that yep those buyers are still there but here's the jump up to 26.5 million um the question is can this maintain this increase in price let's see the last today uh, 120 62 it's unfortunately going to get snuffed out already uh but at least some volatility and we had this great buy opportunity which you probably still have or these recent buy orders well if we look at that 22.5 also yesterday yeah maybe maybe all well here 84 days so i don't think we really went below 22.5 million uh, on the buyer side of things but yeah that's that's a nice little premium here and maybe we can wait for another opportunity at like 28 million or something like that you can see here in april and may that that's definitely in the chart so these these low points are definitely something to look out for and to risk an investment on the nemesis next unfortunately well you know last week 10 days ago we had this great sell opportunity at 25 million we could have bought these for probably 19 million back here 20 million definitely so that's that's pretty nice right um another 25 percent increase here all of a sudden we are settling in between those two so the nemesis selling for 23.3 buyers for 20 million we'd like to see this go below 20 million here 19 to 18 million um sorry yeah 18 million to 19 million if we could get back to these buy orders you know you'd have that no brain situation uh but here we're in between those two the purifier next also coming off from a, a slight sell opportunity at 27 million buy opportunity at 21 million and uh, going back down in price currently selling for 24 buyers at 22.3 and uh here again um it was the right time to buy here at like 21 million but we would like to see this go below 20 million it's just the, the bottom seems to be a little bit higher than uh previously which may be just due to inflation or something like that but it's always a little bit tricky when you see 
uh, this go down towards 18 million uh, on the chart on the one-year chart to call it at 21.3 million so but that was the right time it shows some volatility uh, this time in the still bombers and finally we've got a saber that is basically settling as well at unfortunately a higher trade range that we would like to see if we can get buyers to go below 50 million 48 million you might be able to risk uh, a, a few buyers on the saber now hoping for that volatility up to like 60 million that we see right here so you could you could try it i think you can buy those five to ten sabers that uh, that you want for that trade well no maybe even more of them because these are actively traded quite a bit um so yeah you could you could i think uh, try to pick up some sabers for less than 50 million and uh, wait for the right sale opportunity at 60 to 65 which at some point is probably going to come so yeah the saber despite what the chart looks like could actually already be in a right uh, in a good place for a buy opportunity so that's it for the tech 2 uh, market i think yeah definitely compared to the volumes of tech 1 this is quite interesting and we do see uh, some volatility here and there sell opportunity in heretic for instance no outspoken buy opportunity so i would put the saber there considering where the buyers are at uh, but uh, maybe some of these will fall back enough like manticore last week great buy opportunity and uh, that's what we need to look out for when it comes to the take two markets at least for these smaller ships up to destroyer size hulls uh, you do have the volumes as well uh, to risk a decent buy order next up take three 50 minutes 30 there we go 50 30 uh, let's take a look at the destroyers first oh that's interesting look at the confessor here going up in price from 30 million to 38 million that's not bad uh, in, in fact selling for 40 million now uh, they're being relisted in quite heavy numbers but i think 39 38 million you should be able to sell your confessors uh, at those prices and yeah last week you could have bought those for 30 million so that is that gamble that you need to take i didn't do i, I did it on this one uh, but i didn't do it on right here so uh, but look at that massive volumes increase in price a little bit of market activity and a sell opportunity at 40 million uh, probably 30 percent increase in price all of a sudden the Hecate also going up in price, but uh, quite a bit more timidly than that. So again, the buy opportunity at 30 million, currently selling for 36 million. Not so bad. Here's the Jackdaw, also up in price. So this was the gamble, of course, to take at some point that the rebalance would bring those back a little bit. Jackdaw selling for 40 million. And uh, you, again, could have bought those for 30 million. And finally, we've got the Zweepel as well, that is currently selling for 39 million buyers at 30 and so here that was that buy opportunity when there were hundreds of samples for sale at 30 million isk um, so this is quite interesting i unfortunately have not read up on the details about the tick tree rebalance just yet i think that i'm going to wait for like the dev block or the actual final numbers that ccp will announce before i'll actually cover that uh, but yeah there's some stuff happening in the tick tree market and it looks like uh, at least a little bit of a gamble in the uh, tactical destroyers will have paid off uh, especially in the confessor that went from 30 to 30 million and in the jackdaw as well that went from 30 to 40 million there was some money to be made there in the last few weeks i didn't take that gamble because i, I was still expecting massive nerves but it looks like uh, some of those cruisers are actually getting some interesting changes as well so let's move on to those here is the legion going up in price to uh 100 and 40 million that's quite a lot 145 million for the sellers 133 for the buyers and you could have bought those those for like 115 110 uh just a couple of weeks ago so yeah that that legion gamble that tech tree gamble turns out that here it would have paid off quite decently the loki next uh oof, look that massive volumes first one on the announcement that it would get double tank bonuses but currently loki, uh, loki selling for 150 million almost and the bars are at 135 so a nice little premium here on the actual deployment and announcement of some of these tech tree changes proteus seems to be a bit more timid uh, 131 million for the sellers 123 million for the buyers and finally we've got the tengu that uh, has increased volumes but <laughs> the price is just not going up for the tengu 118 million a couple million higher than last week but not by much 107 million for the sellers that poor tengu uh, is still not in a good position but uh, quite a bit of buying here 
1200 units all of a sudden with an average of maybe a couple hundred not bad and uh, quite disconcerting for the thing to not see a price reaction to that um, still yeah the tick three cruisers it's going to be all about that rebalance what will they be good at what will they be used for what will be the problems with the tick cruise uh, tick three cruisers after they're changed uh, it's going to be quite interesting but we can clearly see here that the legion seems to be a winner and the loki as well uh, those would have made for a very good trade and again here that was the gamble to take you could have probably bought it for 110 million and they are currently selling for 150 million um, that one warning that i always give you guys we don't go crazy with the volumes probably holds true if you do this for not too many lokis you're making some nice isk if you're gonna try to dump hundreds of them all of a sudden you're just gonna crash the price and you're going to have to um, yeah probably uh, watch your prices go down and your margins as well so you you never want to go completely crazy but the loki and the legion were the right ones to pick up and uh, here the confessor there was a slight opportunity as well and a jackdaw too so quite an interesting take three market here all of a sudden uh, but this is normal because of course ccp is intervening in that market and um, there is a lot of stuff to look forward to on cc and uh, probably in dev blocks as well so we'll see how that works out uh, as well um, as it gets covered and then for the final product that's going to be at 5520 we are going to take a look at the rogue swarm accelerator that was a request uh, from last week it's of course so let's do rogue swarm like that um, this is a unique item of course a, uh, an item that's timed and that's tied to the rogue uh, drone event that's happening at the moment and as a result it's really not something that you should check on for uh, long-term purposes or something like that but it's just about what kind of money you can make from the event and so one of these rogue swarm accelerators is currently selling for 11.3 million isk uh, maybe we should take a look at uh, no, not that much uh, in any other place so this is all being brought straight to gta 4 for 11.3 million for the sellers not too bad 8.8 .8 million for the buyers and of course i think that this ends uh, like uh, tomorrow or, or the day after or something like that they started out at 50 million so uh, this is a pattern that you will always see of course in these events early on uh, you should sell them uh, because that's where you'll, you'll make the most uh, is out of it and then as of course uh, more sites are run more supply comes alive these settle uh, to still not a bad price 11.3 million it's not all that bad but i think that now there's going to be more on the market than what can still really be or, or will be consumed by the players and as a result uh, this will then probably drop off quite sharply as uh, as the event ends i think so and these become basically useless because these rogue swarm accelerators the only function until the 30th which is in one week so uh, yeah you can actually use them a little bit longer than the event itself so maybe having three four extra makes a lot of sense um, to just make sure that you can keep training at that bonus state uh, for the longest time possible there will be maybe a little bit of extra demand but of course because of the massive supply here um, we went down in price from 50 to 11.4 million and the real question is do you expect this to go back up in price uh, for that last week i personally don't think so um, i actually think that uh, will will continue maybe to move sideways you can clearly see that the chart has flattened out here at the tail end but i don't see a resurgence in that last week when it comes to rock swarm accelerators and that's going to be it for this eve talk guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you all next time